Okay, so, sorry, I'm in a new place. Uh, we were basically talking about getting this website up and going and using a for loop to iterate over the paragraphs in our blog. And so something that happened is we got this message. Um, you don't have to read it, but the point is that something is broken. And part of the reason is that I'm doing this from recall, and it'd be much better if I have a like some documentation in front of me, right? So if we go to viewmastery.com, you can get the cheat sheet, uh, just like view cheat sheet. And this is really nice because um, instead of having JavaScript complain to me for me to like try again and then like maybe fail, it's much better for me to just like copy and paste or just like type from seeing the actual directive that I want to be using. So we want to do a for loop, right? So here's the problem. I was trying to do this, but I typed something else. And so here, for, I think I did it right, v4, item, this one, item and item, and then we need the key. Okay, I've got the paragraph, so each paragraph in paragraph, so I want to do something, and then this should be the result. Okay, let's double check if it's working. Yes, it's still complaining. It's saying the v4 alias expression, error compiling template. Um, let's try the view dev tools. Uh-oh, it's not detecting, it's a view app. Probably because of this. So how do we fix this? Let's try this again. Let's do an array of test, oops, test, test. If you guys know the answer, don't be shy. Test, test. And it doesn't like that for paragraph in paragraphs. In the paragraph, the v4 alias expression found in root. Um, okay, let's do JavaScript uh, array. Okay, let's find out how to do this right. Found an array, that looks fine. Paragraphs, v4 paragraph, for paragraph and paragraph. This seems redundant. Something seems wrong. I think it's this guy. I'm pretty sure it's that. Yeah. So this is great. Um, use use a cheat sheet or something because there's like this this little four is screwing up everything. And debugging like JavaScript is already hard as it is. So just like you want to have something to go off of. Let's check and it's loading, and it's loaded, and I've got my test, which is the names of my paragraphs, right? So, like, let's go to Ipsum Lorem. Let's do Cupcake Lorem, and we're gonna get some paragraphs so that our blog is not terrible. Okay, and so this is a very cute website, cakeipsum.com, where we can <laughs> generate these paragraphs Cupcake, Ipsum Delorum Cinemet Cupcake Tiramisu. So they're they're just cute. Um, we're gonna use this as the the imagine if I actually had a blog and this was the paragraph. So we're gonna put that here. Okay. And this is a bit hard. Okay, so like that. Okay, cool. So I've just let me put single quotes. So these are backticks, which are like really um, they basically escape it. So if you have quotes inside of your paragraph, it's not going to have an issue. Okay, so now we have an array of paragraphs. Okay, cool. So now we've got our blog. Okay, so and what we can do is turn on word wrap. Uh, word wrap auto. I don't like that. Word wrap false. There we go. So I just want it to wrap. Um, this is just one of the settings for Sublime, right? So yeah, so now I can see the paragraphs, which is a bit easier on the eyes. Okay, so let's go to our thing. Let's check. Yeah, so okay, so the question was, was it not working because of the four? And that's, the, at the, that's it, right? So um, this is a DSL, it's a domain specific language. So um, it's like 
a simplified version of JavaScript. And we need to be very, very careful here because, right, like, I was getting confused because in JavaScript, you know, you do like a for loop, like for thing, 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 right? Um, but Vue tries to make your life easier by get, like, getting rid of some of the sort of the, um, sort of like the, the syntax of JavaScript to just sort of make it simpler. And so I'd mistakenly put a for here, and it's not necessary because I'm using the view directive v4. This can just be as concise as possible for each of the paragraphs in my paragraphs array. Give me the paragraph. So that was the issue. Um, basically, it was me being stupid. You can say it. It's OK. OK, so we refresh this, and here is our beautiful blog with our cupcakes. So I'm going to really quickly add some style to this. What do you like? Do you like a quick CSS reset? Okay, cool. And then we'll just say like anything that's inside of our app. I want you to be a, like a, uh, let's use CSS grid. We do grid, grid, uh, template columns. So I'm going to make a three by three grid and I want this center column to be the content and we'll do from zero to 512 pixels and then anything inside of app, I want that to fall into the second column like that. So basically this is just a CSS reset, it's nothing fancy. Um, okay, and then over here I'm telling my app to be a grid and I'm telling my app's contents, the stuff inside of our app, to fall from here to here, basically in the second column. Uh, another really nice thing that we can do, because this is our content column, is I can do this. I can like create an identifier for this. I can say this is the beginning and the end of my column. So this is content start, this is content end, and then instead of two over three, because that's a bit cryptic, I can do content like that, right? Okay, so <laughs> it looks like it's starting to like look sort of like nice. Um, we could do other stuff, right? We could say like, I want everything so I'm targeting the root. The root is basically a fancy way of saying um, HTML. They're, I think they're equivalent. So root, we're gonna say, I want the font for my blog to be like uh, Blink Mac System Font or Apple. So I'm basically saying like, just give me the default system font. And this would need to be font family. Okay, and that should be fine. Yeah, right? It's starting to look like, like a real thing. Um, we can go further than this, right? So we can say like, I want my font size to be like 20 pixels. Yeah, so you can see like very quickly, um, we can start to do something pretty cool. And it's a combination of HTML, CSS, and view. Now, we don't have a backend right now. Everything we're doing is front end. But once you have a little bit of a knowledge of, sorry, I said that too fast, once you have a little bit of knowledge of the back end, we can do some really cool stuff. Wait, we can, we can get this like doing like a JSON or like, like, like an API request. We can get the data if it's stored on another server um, and then just present it. So this is like hard coding it, but we can also put it somewhere else and just grab it. So this can be dynamic. This is static content, static because it's just like on our computer and it's in front of us, but we can make it dynamic by doing an API request instead, which would be like maybe how you would do this in the future. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to do to make this like a little cuter, uh, it's pretty cute already. How's the debugger? Yeah, it's nice. So yeah, um, that's basically like the very, very, very simple overlook of like why you might use Vue to build a website instead. So, so we're gonna start, let's just like do questions real quick. Um, by the way, there are view if, you can do like v if, uh, view for, uh, let's check the cheat sheet, the cheat sheet. Uh, v for, v if, those are like the main ones that we care about right now. So we covered basically this stuff. There's some like extra stuff you can do, but it's okay for now. Let's check in for questions. Hey, Aneria joined us. Hello. <laughs> I had to start and stop a few times because my computer's getting too hot. 
So now we're in a cooler place. OK, so just to recap, we did a really, really quick demo of making a website, but also taking the content out of our website and putting it inside of a view. And this is how you would do that. So this is pretty cool. Um, really simple, really short, really sweet. So now that we, we know how to do that, let's do something like a bit more advanced. Um, if we go to 100 days of code, the bot, so this is twitter.com slash 100 days of code. If we go here, this background was generated using Vue, which is very interesting because these guys are just emojis. And, and this whole thing, this, this like background, is just HTML and CSS and Vue. Like, like, you don't have to actually make websites with Vue. You can, you can make art with Vue, too. That's great. So let's, like, let's make this. And specifically, we're not going to make it for this one. We're going to make it for women who code. Um, it shouldn't take too long. So this is pretty boring, right? Let's like, let's like make it a little bit nicer. So how do we do that? Let's start from scratch, right? Okay, we're gonna do whc.html. Uh, okay, so we're starting a website. We're gonna make some art and it's gonna be generated using view. So here's how we can do that. Doc type, HTML, HTML, head, Body, body. Now we're not going to make this um, like this isn't this doesn't need to be like a mobile website, so we don't need like the meta viewport thing, but we do want the meta car set because we're using emoji. We want to make sure that the text is being encoded using UTF-8. Um, we don't need the title. We don't need any of that stuff, but we do want style, style, and then in the body we're going to put the content. So we know if it's going to be view, we know we need a couple of things off the top, right? We need to have a place for our app to go. So we can put it in an ID called app. Um, it'll be in JPEG. So yeah, what the question was, is our picture going to be JPEG or PNG when it's finished? We're going to take a screenshot, which will be uh, a PNG um, sometimes a website will force you to put it in a JPEG, which we can just convert it, but it's going to be HTML and CSS in which we convert to a PNG, and then we use that to upload it to uh, Twitter. So PNG is fine. Um, by the way, PNGs are called lossless, which means anytime you have a PNG, uh, there's a good chance that it's like a really, really high quality picture. Um, if you convert a PNG into a JPEG, you're going to be losing some quality because the whole point of JPEGs is that they are compressed images, whereas PNGs, you can think of them as like uncompressed. So prefer PNG, and if you have to, then use a JPEG instead. Okay, so here's how we can start. So if we look at this, what's really cool is imagine we're just like doing a for loop, right? We're just doing a for loop and we're like putting an emoji for like, like if we do like for x is, uh, for x is zero while x is less than like 200, x plus plus, right? That's how we can think about this. So let's do like, let's get all the boilerplate, right? So we know we're gonna do like script, src, uh, this is gonna be https unpackage.com slash view script yeah so like like Nick was commenting about the quality basically mp3 yeah it's, it's actually really good um, if you ever have like flack audio uh, you can think of that sort of like as a PNG because the idea is that it's lossless right um, which means that uh, flack like audio right this is a audio and then this is an image um, these are huge files, right? But whenever we talk about JPEGs, it's very similar to talking about like MP3s, right? Because these are, the, the, the quality is much worse, right? So MP audio, MP3 audio is very similar to JPEG image in terms of the, like, the data. Good question or good comment. 
OK, so. Okay, so here we go. So we've got the boilerplate, and we just need to let's do use strict, and then we're going to do const app equals new view. So the only reason we can do this is because we added view here. Okay, so we're here, and we're going to mount it. So we say element is this guy. Um, I mentioned this in the other one. I just want to point out you can use JavaScript here. So you can do like document. Like, I don't know what it is, get element by ID or whatever, and then you could do like app. If that's JavaScript, you can do this, but obviously this is much shorter and it's just another way to do the same thing. Uh, all right, and then here we're going to do uh, <clears throat> do we need any data? I don't know if we need data yet, so we can leave it alone. Um, be really careful about commas in JavaScript. It's really annoying. You need a comma anytime you have multiple like things in your object, but the last one doesn't get a comma. So that's like probably like the most common like warning I get when I'm programming in Vue is I either have um, a comma where I shouldn't or I don't have a comma where I should. So just keep that in mind. All right. So the question was, what is use strict for? Um, we can use strict to give us a few extra JavaScript warnings, right? So like JavaScript, whoops, JavaScript, use strict. Because JavaScript is such a fast and loose language, we can use, uh, we can like have this thing at the top to enforce that we don't, um, it's like we want to be careful not to, uh, if, I mean, JavaScript will basically warn us a little bit more if we're doing something wrong. Um, other languages have this idea too. So like Perl, you, there's like a use strict for Perl. Uh, uh, right. So yeah. Yeah, so like in Perl, it's interesting. You can have a thing at the top like use strict and use warnings. So very similar. But the point is um, <clears throat> you're basically telling these, I mean not every programming language has this. But you're telling the programming language to be like, like, hey, you can yell at me. Like, you can tell me if I'm doing something stupid. It's okay. Um, so, like, I, I like never use. Is it a debugger? Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like a debugger. It's 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 more like a preventative, preventative debugger, right? So, preventative meaning like prevention. Um, it's something we can use, hopefully, so we don't need the debugger. Right? It's, it's going to try to sort of give us warnings in advance. So like you might use a debugger to fix something that's already broken, but you might use something like this to give you enough warnings along the way um, that you don't need like a full-blown debugger. Uh, but I like just would recommend starting to use this today. <clears throat> it's been around for a while, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so like let's make a paragraph for each emoji, and then this is for women who code. So let's get like the astronaut. Astronaut. <clears throat> Don't be shy to ask questions at all. Okay, so our app is going to be very, very simple. <clears throat> okay, some water so I can stop coughing. Okay, this is in a file called Woman Who Code. <laughs> There's our like adorable astronaut. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to say our app. We want to just center it. So we can do display flex, justify content center, align items center. And then I'll put some comments. So this is just saying, hey, this is a flex element, and then this is saying that all of the items in the in this like in this element, anything inside of it, I want that to be centered. So we can do uh, just do like flex center. So that's specifically how you would center using flexbox. Okay, now it's only at the top, and that's because this doesn't take up very much height. We need to also say take up the full available height. So I'm going to add two more rules. 
uh, we'll just do one more, full screen, right? And I want this to be the full width and the full height. Um, so we can say width, we could do percent or view width, but I, I'm in the habit of using view width. And then height, we can do view height. Oops, view height. All right, some questions. It is like an early warning system using Ustrict. That's exactly how to think about it. How do I get the icon between the paragraph? Okay, so if you're on a Mac, you can hit Control uh, here. Control plus Command plus Space. And that will get the emojis for you. If you're not, um, this is just like another thing you can do. Emojipedia.org. <laughs> Kids used to grow up with like Wikipedia. Now we grow up with Emojipedia. You can go here and find emojis via search. So I can say like astronauts, right? And then I can just copy and paste this uh, like this. And actually this like website is not very different than the color picker that we're going to make. So this will probably be like part one, making the art, sorry, making the art using these generative techniques. And then in part two, we'll do the, like the actual app. Once we sort of get more comfortable with you. Okay, so basically we have our astronaut. And she is here and she's happy. Now once I add this, we should sort of, yeah, so now she's in the center. Now it looks better. Now because of the, if we have the CSS debugger turned on, we have this like gap right here. Um, we can just do like, in our body, we can say uh, margin either zero or I think unset's a bit more semantic, and then padding uh, unset. And then this is a this is a reset for the like the space. So that's the comment. Okay. Okay. Now she's in the center, and she's she's small, but she's she's happy. So we basically need to do a for loop to generate. Um, like to put like the emoji. Uh, so we can do like v4 and then we do equals and then enter. So let's just try like, a, like let's try like for, I don't know if we can do this. Like, let's try like for x in 200. <laughs> right? Um, it's pretty simple, but we just generated 200 paragraphs really easily, <clears throat> which is why, which is exactly why Vue is like amazing. You can write the actual code for your website like automatically or algorithmically. Okay, let's look at the actual, like what's being generated. Uh, here, so it's, it's making a paragraph <laughs> um, emojis sometimes are just combinations of another emoji. So like if you look really carefully, the woman and the rocket emoji makes the astronaut emoji, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so we've generated 200, I think 200, uh, astronauts. So we're getting closer. We want to put them like this instead. And a, and a sort of a nice technique for that is actually CSS Grid again. So CSS Grid and Flexbox are like really like like your best friends when it comes to web development. Okay, so let's make a grid that we can use to put our astronaut in this sort of like sequence. Okay, so let's make this. So let's see, do we need to change anything? I don't think so. Let's put div class grid. So we're going to wrap our astronaut inside of a div because basically like anything inside of our app, we still want it to be centered. That's fine. But then anything inside of here, we want it to be a grid. Okay, so now things are going to get a little confusing, but let's make a grid class. So we're going to say dot grid, oops. And let's like let's refactor this real quick. I'd rather have this be two classes. So I'd rather say like I'd rather say full screen and center. And that way this is reusable. So full screen, sorry, we'll do center first. 
and stop here, and then uh, full screen. Oh, did I do that wrong? No, I did that right. Full screen. It's just full screen is above center. <coughs> Okay, I got a question. Nick asked, how to understand what to use Flexbox or Grid? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, this is probably the best way to remember whether you're gonna use Flexbox or Grid. If I have a, like a Microsoft, like a, like a Google Doc, right? So docs.google.com. <clears throat> Let's just make a new one. I'm sure you've seen this before, right? When you're writing um, like a document, this thing right here, these buttons, which are kind of small, these are the alignment buttons, right? So I can put like text, but I want to align it in the center or the right. This is very, very similar to what Flexbox is doing. So you have some like box and you're pushing stuff to the left or you're pushing it to the right. So that's why it's called flex. We're like, like pushing, right? We're like pushing stuff around the box. Grid is like a, a more, it's kind of like a more advanced version of Flexbox. See like right here, this thing? Um, this is if you wanna do some like advanced um, layout using a word processor. If you wanna create like multiple columns and multiple rows, like uh, here. If I do like, oh, okay, this is like such a great example. I've never thought of this. If we go to uh, was it sheets.google.com, right? So like this is like my, like an Excel document. If I just have a very simple content and I wanna push it around to the center or the right, this is effectively what Flexbox is doing. And you can also do vertical, it doesn't have to be horizontal. If your design requires um, like grid cells, like this thing, like, right? So these are the, the columns and the rows and I might like wanna resize them or stretch them. Um, this is much more like what CSS Grid is for. So, so it depends. In our website, if we wanna put something in the center, that's not that complicated, right? So if we wanna put something in the center, we can use flex. But the second that we wanna have like a grid, right? The second we wanna do uh, something like this, this header, I don't know that you would want to use Flexbox for this because this looks a lot more like something that we should do in Excel, right? So this is like very similar to this design. So we're actually using both here. You, you don't necessarily wanna think about like, should I use Flexbox or Grid? You're probably gonna use Flexbox and Grid. That's, that's how I think about it. Um, really good question. Okay, so we're gonna set this one to Grid. So this is, we're setting the element to be grid. And then we wanna like, we wanna make a few columns and a few rows. So we can do grid template columns. Uh, and then we're gonna do grid template rows, right? Okay, so repeat is just a shortcut. We're saying how many times do we want to repeat this thing? So um, we can say like, as far as the columns go, uh, if we wanted to match this, I've got, I think it's like, I think it's 24, I don't remember, and then this is one, two, three, this is like 24 by six. Is that right? Uh, it's 28. I think it was 192 total. Right, let's do 32, one FR, and then let's do six, one FR. So basically, we are going to repeat 32 columns across and then six rows vertical. That's what this is a shortcut for. Alternatively, we could do like 1FR, 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 right? Um, but this is much shorter. And then FR, FR is for fraction unit. So um, this is a unit, right? But you could use pixels here. You could use like view width, right? It's just a unit, uh, but it's a CSS grid unit. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so she's not that happy. What's wrong? So we have full screen, we have center. So this should be good. V4XO. 
we're not like using our grid. Um, okay, so well, here, 32 times 6 is 192. But we have a problem. Hmm. Let's do let's do this. Let's try like putting. Oh. Is that up? Grid template rows, grid template columns. Repeat when a far repeat. Let's try just putting two. Oh, and then let's put center here. So she is centered in the paragraph. Okay, so she's centered inside of a paragraph. And then let's put a few of her. Okay, that's starting to look right. And then like, let's put a ton. Okay, I think this is working. Except there is a problem. The app is full screen and this is centered. It's not actually centered though. Um, let me just check. Yes, this isn't doing something it should be doing. Display file, line items, justify. Hmm. Uh, I wonder if I am getting something wrong. Let's give, oh, oh, this shouldn't be 1FR, I think. Let's make that like 10 pixels. No, <laughs> it's like an army. It's not the right answer. Hmm. Okay, I am going to get to your question in just a second. I just don't want to feel like an idiot. I just want to fix this. Um, let me just put a height here. Let's do like 400 pixels. Yeah, I'm doing something wrong. But I don't know what it is. Okay, so let me answer the question. What's the best unit for defining width versus height in CSS? Well, it depends. Um, the ones that are worth remembering, the ones that I think are like the most important are like percent, view width, view height, I'll explain what those are in a second, pixel, m, and rem. Those are at least the ones that I think are like the most relevant. So real quick, percent is the percent of the available width. View width is the, the percent of the viewport's width. The difference between these two, because they look very similar, the available width means the current element, right? And the viewport means the actual, the whole screen. So you can have an element inside of a website like this, right? This is an element. Um, and this has a width, but this is not the same width as the entire screen. So percent is um, like the percent of the, the parent element's width, whereas view width is the percent of the entire screen's width. Uh, so once you understand view width, you understand view height, because this is just height. Um, so, and then you have uh, pixel. Pixel is just simple. Um, this is like a, I, I actually like try to like, I try to not use pixel very much because it's not flexible. Um, EMs and REMs are much more flexible. So REMs are more simple. REMs are the root EM. Uh, like by default, your website will be 16 pixels. That'll be the default font size. So if you use one REM, that is 16 pixels. If you use two REM, that's 32 pixels. So it's basically a multiplier. REM multiplies by the root font size, which is 16 by default. EMs are more advanced than this. EMs take the parent, so like let's say I have div style font size, 32, uh, let's do like 20 pixels. Then inside of here I have a paragraph with the style of a font size 
1.5 EM, right? So this one, 1.5 EM, can you think, like, like if I make this REM, it actually skips this, right? And then what do you think it would be? It'd be 1.5 times the root size. Yeah, pixel is not good for responsive design, agreed. Uh, right, so if I do 1.5 REM, I'm getting 1.5 times the root font size, which is 16 pixels. If I use EM, I'm gonna get the parent, which is this one. So I'm gonna get times 20. So like, use EM very carefully and probably use REM a lot more because REM is um, not that complicated, but it is also very flexible. Uh, so yeah, these are like the most common units that I would use. All right, so <laughs> back to our broken app. Um, but so the th okay, so here's what I want to happen. This is dark blue and this is light blue. And then this dark blue should actually be in the center. It shouldn't be at the top. So that's the problem. And it shouldn't have to do with this, does it? Right, no, there's something wrong. Basically, this is not being centered correctly. Um, so let me, th oh, you know why? Oh, oh. <laughs> Everything's inside of an ID, and these are classes. Uh, this has happened to me before. It's like a super frustrating thing. Yeah, I knew I'd... Hang on. Okay, this is class. So now we shouldn't have that problem. Cool, okay. Put her back. There we go. So she's in the center. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's just like, it's frustrating when you like screw something up, but it's also frustrating when you screw something up in front of other people. So that's all. Okay, cool. So we're back and it's pretty simple, right? We have a, an ID for app and then the class has both full screen and center. So we're inheriting these rules. So our app is full screen, the content of our app is in the center, and then we have this like grid for our astronaut. So now I think we're ready to do the V4. So let's do V4, uh, like what, let's do like X in 192. Okay, so Imagine how painful that would have been to do that in um, like HTML and CSS, right? So like we're adding a couple of lines of code, but the benefit is so tremendous that like the combination of Flexbox and Grid and View is like really powerful. So we're using like, we're using all three right now. Okay, so. I'm wondering why she's not going the full width. Um, maybe because, let's make this full screen. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's a problem. Let's do, let's make two more auxiliary classes. We'll have full width and then we'll do full height. And then these are basically going to borrow from full screen. And then we'll just do like this. So, so right, we have full width, full height, and then this one we only care about the width, this one we only care about the height. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And then I'm gonna plug in the full, full width here. So the problem is that this is not that wide, um, but we still want it to like go the full width. So we just need to say very, very specifically that this needs to be full width. Okay, and there we go. So you can start to see this is actually getting much closer to this one, right? Okay, and then 
Um, this is sort of annoying, right? Because if we change the columns and the rows, it'd be nice if we didn't have to like compute this every time. Um, which keyboard shortcuts am I using? When I'm doing like this stuff, when I'm like, right, like this stuff, uh, <clears throat> I think that's what you mean. Um, if you're using Sublime, you can hold down Option and Command if you're on a Mac, and it's something similar if you're on Windows. But basically, there's some key that you can hold to do like this multi-cursor thing, um, if that's what you meant. Full with full height center grid. Okay, and then we're just gonna say like, this is a grid for 32 times six. Okay, so we're getting closer. Um, so I wanna have this like be automatic. I don't wanna have to type this every time, which means we, we might need to like do something clever. <clears throat> Here, we can basically say, let's have some data. And in our data, we're gonna have, um, let's say like sum, and sum is a number. So we'll say sum is 192. So now we should be able to say sum. Get the same thing. But sum isn't actually like, <clears throat> it's not that simple. Sum is actually columns times, like, like rows times, col columns times rows, right? So we could do like columns and we could do rows and then, well, some like needs to be like a function, right? So then, then we can do like, uh, do like a method. We'll change this to something later, but we'll, we'll start here. Okay, so like let's say our columns are 32, our rows are six, like that. And then we want a way to get the sum, right? So sum is maybe like a function. Um, and then let's do like return columns, oops, columns times rows. So let's see if this works. I think that's right. So for x and sum, okay, so we have a problem. Let's check in the expector. Property sum is not defined on the instance, but referred to during the render, which makes the blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's try this. So sum as a function. Um, it's not liking that. Oh, you know what the problem is? Whew, okay, so basically, um, columns and rows, it's getting confused because it thinks that columns and rows are like global variables which it's not. Um, they are being defined locally, which means we need to refer to these columns and rows and not these columns and rows, which don't exist, which is why this is failing. So what we can do is we'll put this in front of it, which means I want you to look inside of the app for columns and rows. I don't want you to look all the way out here for columns and rows. So when you're working with like functions inside of you, you need to use this. Okay, let's see if that fixed it. Um, didn't completely fix it. Sum is not a function. I think I need to do this. I'm still having an error. Property. Make a local variable. Oh, sorry. So, um, like, if I'm out here, the question is, like, what does local variable mean here? If I'm out here, then I have an issue, right? Um, so I have app, and I can say like, like if I did like console log uh, app, sorry, uh, console log columns, or console log, oops, console log rows, then this is meaningless because columns and rows are, de are defined inside of app. They're not defined up here, right? If I had var, blah, 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 then this would be fine. But because I have them defined here, this doesn't work. So in this case, I need to say app because the columns and the rows belong to the app. It's that sort of problem that this wouldn't work, right? Because then it thinks I'm up here. 
So instead I need to say this, which is actually app. So this is literally, I don't think this will work, but it's, it's basically this, right? It's saying the apps columns and the apps rows, just like this works. So when you hear like local variable or global variable, that's kind of what it means. These are global variables that are defined and can be used anywhere in the program. A local variable is localized to something, which in this case is app. Property or method sum is not defined on the instance but referred during to the render as reactive. Okay, let's see. This columns times this rows. Columns and rows are the data. It's probably something simple. And then we're referring to here, let's try let's try this. Like let's try let's try like this is a hack. So we're gonna just like force it to recognize this is a hack. Okay, so that works. So it's probably something very simple. Oh, you <laughs> I think I know what the problem is. I think I'm missing an S here. Oh, which is super confusing because data is plural, but it's it doesn't have an S, and method is methods is plural, but it does have an S. So like again, um, this is sort of why JavaScript is insane because <clears throat> sorry, this is why JavaScript is sort of insane because um, these are like not super obvious or intuitive things. Uh, and the, the compiler and the warnings in the console are not always going to be that helpful. So just like that's, that's why JavaScript can feel so painful. All right, so let's make that sum. Let's try that now. Okay, no warning, but where is our data? Let's make, so we're calling sum, which is a function, returning this columns and this rows. <laughs> Should be these. Okay. Uh, and then, and then columns, rows. Uh, what was the problem? Okay. I think that's a function. Yay! Woo! Okay. So, we're making progress. Basically, um, when you have like a function, like this, you like function, hello world. If you do this, you're referring to the function, but doesn't call it. So there are examples where you need to do that which you probably knew. Okay, so. So we have something, it looks pretty cool. Um, okay, so what else is left? Now, we want this to like update this somehow, right? We don't have to, because like we have to repeat ourselves. So it'd be nice if we didn't have to repeat ourselves. Um, what we can do is use view in a very powerful way uh, to do this for us. So I can't like, like unfortunately, I don't, I can't do this. Like I can't say like app columns. Let me just, I think that shouldn't work. Yeah, I wish it could. I wish it did. It doesn't. So what we can do is this. We're going to bind it um, like this. So this is still grid, but it doesn't know what the grid looks like. So we can do like, like we could do style and then we need to do, here, let me paste that, actually. Basically, we want to paste this. Okay, so we want to style and then do something. And then it's going to be like this. So grid template, grid, oops, grid template columns, something. And then this is grid template uh, rows, something, right? That's kind of what we're going for. And then let's put this here, right? And then, okay, so we, like, we can't, we still can't do like this thing, but we're getting closer. 
So effectively, we want it to be like repeat 32 1 fr. Let's put this down here. And then let's go to here and say like repeat, uh, was it 32 times 6? Yeah, 6 1 fr. Okay. That's very, very close to, to how we do this. Okay, so this right now should still work. We're just inlining it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nick said, I begin to understand those guys who swear at JavaScript. Yeah, the thing is, um, like the only way to write, write JavaScript and not lose your mind is to write JavaScript like a scientist. You like need to like like do an experiment, double check, like write it down. Like you have to do things so carefully because like if I do five things at once and each one of those things has like a 15% chance of like I type something terribly and I like it broke it, um, it is much easier to program JavaScript just doing one thing at a time because it's so likely that like something will go wrong. You guys are asking like awesome questions. All right, so like let's let's see if we can get this to work. So we have style. Okay, this is repeat, and we can turn off word wrap. So we can do false. There we go. Okay, and we'll put this here. Okay, let's see if why is. Oh. <laughs> I was missing, I was missing this guy. That's why it didn't work. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty easy to read. Um, now what we can do, so, so if we wanted to use a view inside of the style, which is what we do want, we need some way to like set this based on these values. So what we can do is we're going to bind the data. So we keep talking about binding data. We're going to bind the data. So here we're going to do, um, I believe it's vbind, but now that we've learned our lesson, we're going to check if that exists. Uh, let's do like style. Uh, yes, that's it, right? Because it's we're doing binding. So the the attribute is not href, it's style. So vbind style and the columns and then the rows. Let me check the questions. Okay. So <clears throat> it is not working because, oh, we're in like view land. Okay, so we have this, but we can also do this. That's equivalent. Um, and to show you, Right, that's this one. So we can do vbind in front of it, but we don't have to. Where did I get the view cheat sheet? Really good question. So go to view mastery, view mastery, like that, view mastery, mastery.com, and then you can either like, well, let's just go there. So this is like one of the official learning websites for view. And um, yeah, if we scroll to the bottom, they have a cheat sheet that you can download. It will ask you for your email and you just hit cancel and it should still download the PDF. So I don't think you have to like, like here, if I like, if I open this in a separate browser, it's gonna be like, yo, give me your email. I'd be like, no way, man, I don't, I don't want to. What? Oh, shit. Oh, okay, you have to create an account. Anyway, maybe I can just like do view cheat sheet. Yeah, they don't, they want your email. They really want your email. Greg and Adam really want your email. <laughs> so we're back to here. Okay, so we have style, right? This is how we can start to use um, view here. So here, you can see that I need like a bracket. So We've been, we've been working with these so far, these guys. Inside of a um, attribute, I just use one. So I do like this, and I could do like this. 
Now remember, this is like JavaScript land. So these dashes are not going to work. I can either use camel case, like this, or I can use kebab case, which is like a really funny word. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't use kebab. I can use kebab case if I put it in um, a string, like that. We'll just use camel case. So we do template, like that. And now, let's see what happens. Okay, so style, grid, oh, sorry, I need to do like commas, I think. Let's check. Okay, so I have, let's make sure one is working. Oops. Style, and then instead of here, grid template, I think. It's, it's really something. Let me check the, uh, let's check the output. Oops. Yeah, so debugging the web is like much harder than programming languages. Okay. View warning. Unexpected token. Grid template. I think, I think it doesn't like repeat because that's CSS. So let's put that with a back tick. Uh, does that work? Yeah, Whew. okay. <laughs> That's this is like exactly why I'm doing these um, streams because for you to learn this on your own from scratch um, is like so painful that like you might not want to even do web development. And I'd rather you like bear through the pain through me than have to suffer it on your own. Um, so basically, this is JavaScript, so we need to use strings here. Uh, so we don't break stuff. Um, yeah, so back tick or single quote works. So, so now we are like finally, finally, finally very close to connecting the columns to the rows. Okay, so let's just try to do like columns. This would be a really good bonus for the view course. I was just thinking. Okay, let's see if this works. All right, we have created a flexible relationship. And this is really good. So like, let's like make this here and let's make this here. And like, let's do, let's, let's do like that. Okay, so um, we can also make this appear a little bit shorter by just getting rid of the white space, which doesn't change anything. Okay, so it's just a little bit shorter. So basically, we have inlined the grid for our website so that we can connect it to the data, which is now very, very, very flexible. So I should be able to do like 10. Yeah! So, like, that's pretty cool because I can make really expressive websites by connecting the data to the CSS in this way. So, and the reason we had to like jump through all those hoops is because I can't use view in here. I can use it here if I use a style like this with the, with the, um, with the semicolon, sorry, with the colon, but I have to use this, I have to be careful basically. Uh, but it is possible um, to like make really interesting website designs using really expressive code. Okay, so let's check comments, and then we're gonna like do a couple things, and then we'll wrap up this section. <laughs> so Nick said one day he mixed up the back tick, the back tick, with the single quote which like is also not going to work but it's hilarious because 
Um, like, you don't have these problems when you program in Go. Or, like, you might have these problems when you program in, like, Ruby, JavaScript, or Python, because those tend to be, they tend to be interpreted languages, which means they are not going to, like, warn you as much. But when you use a static, a static compiled language like Go, um, these problems don't exist because you can't compile the program. And it'll tell you why you can't compile the program. So like, it's as fun as it is to like make websites and this stuff, um, recognize that that pain has like a really significant cost too. So like I hope that if you're trying something new, you like maybe check out these screencasts first because um, because I'm gonna like go through the pain for you. So cool, this is, this is almost done. Um, we've connected the data, we have a function. Now, if we wanted to, we could make this a computed. Um, I'll just do it and then I'll explain what it is. This is just a more advanced technique that you can use. So let's just check if this works. Okay. So computed, yeah. Okay, so we can use computed instead. Computed is, um, let's do some terminology. How are we guys doing? That's okay, Naria. These are going to be recorded, and I hope you can finish these when you're when you're ready. Don't worry about it. Okay. So in view, we've talked about the element, we've talked about data, we've talked about computed. Oh, sorry, we haven't, we've talked about methods. Now we're going to talk about computed really quickly. So like, let's say I have a function. Let's say I have like a function and it's like, like let's do like function foo. And then in our foo function, we like, we're going to return, like, let's say we have two variables. We have, like, var a equals 5, var b equals 10, right? So we have a and b, and we have our function. And then our function is going to return a times b. So let's say that this, let's assume this takes, like, 10 milliseconds for some reason. Like, let's just imagine this function takes 10, like, takes time. Every time we call foo, assuming that it takes 10 milliseconds, um, like let's do like some expensive operation, and then like let's do like this takes 10 seconds, 10 milliseconds. Okay, so anytime we do this like, um, anytime we call foo and foo needs time before it can return something, um, this takes time, right? So like this is 10 milliseconds, this is 10 milliseconds, um, and it's not like good. Um, what would be nicer, what would be so, 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 so much nicer would be if this only work, like if, if this function only takes 10 milliseconds, if A or B changes. But if A and B are always the same, then it would be much nicer if like the computer can just save them um, and give them back to me. So I don't actually have to call foo. I can just like, like instead of like, instead of give me a new foo, it's give me the old foo because foo hasn't actually changed. This idea is called a computed property. So you know what a variable is, you know what a function or a method is. So let's do this really carefully, property. Okay, so variables and properties are kind of the same idea, right? It's just some, it's like some data that we store. Functions and, and methods are like, um, like data we, like it's like, it's, it's something that we do, right? So it's, this is an action, this takes time. Computed is like this really interesting combination of variables and functions where it's a variable it's a variable um, unless something changes in which case it's it's a function instead if that makes sense so 
Computed is like a fancy version of a variable or a function depending on if A or B changed. But if A and B are always, always the same, like they're both constants and they can't change, then, then this, will like, this won't take 10 milliseconds. It'll always be saved. So computed is, um, it's, it's like a good design. You, use, you wanna use computed properties uh, so that you have backups of things. Now, this is sort of an obscure example um, it doesn't matter if this is computed or if this is like a method because in our program, columns and rows don't change anywhere. So we, we are fine using methods here. But if we had some like JavaScript down here that was like changing columns and rows, then we might want to make this computed. So it's like a more optimized version. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind if you use a computed property is that the syntax is no longer a function. It treats it just like a variable. So that's why we don't need the parentheses and in fact it won't work if we do use parentheses here. Okay, so now we can use computed or we can use methods, but the point is um, you've sort of seen both of them. Okay, cool. And now the last thing is that how about, how about instead of giving us this one astronaut, instead of always giving us this astronaut, how about we get a different skin tone each time? So like, let's say like, let's do like um, astronaut, oops, astronaut, and this is a function, and the point is every time it calls this function, it's gonna generate a new skin tone for the astronaut, so we can be like as inclusive as possible. So we can say, let's do a method now, because uh, we're going to call it every time. We want a new answer every time. It doesn't need to be computed. And then we can say function, uh, let's do like astronaut is the name of the function. Okay, and uh, yep, that looks good. And then we're going to do, um, well, let's get our astronauts ready. So let's do like var, let's do const. Uh, let's make this an array, like we did for Schrodinger. And then I need my, actually I can get them from Emojipedia. Okay, we've got female astronaut. And we just need to get the, hey, we got a new watcher. Hello. Uh, so, so let's get all the different skin tones for for, oh, I thought I would have them. Hmm, okay, we'll just like put them in ourselves. Basically, we need to get all the astronauts, so that way we can make the art, and then let's do, so, we want a white astronaut, we want a tan astronaut, and let's get some other astronauts. Okay, so we should have one, two, three, four, five, okay. Okay, there, if we, put it, if we put it in a string, suddenly these, God, this is so weird. Um, hang on, okay. This looks so creepy. Wait, 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 wait. This whole thing is one astronaut, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh my god, it's like, so weird. <laughs> okay, that is our five multi-ethnic, multi-racial astronauts. Can we make emojis with different inclines? Um, by inclines, do you mean like sizes? Because if you looked at the art here, here, they are different sizes. Is that what you meant, Nick? Oh, we got six people watching. No, oh. surprising. So let's see. So the thing is, that, yeah, if you want to have them be different sizes, um, that is like, it is so easy to do that with view. It's amazing. So we're gonna start simple. We're just gonna pick one of these. 
Um, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, we're going to start simple. We're just going to focus on, like, the astronaut. Um, if this is interesting, we can, we can, like, here, I'll show you. Um, so, like, this is what you're talking about, right? For the bots, like, if you look closely, they have different sizes, they have different colors, um, they could have different rotations. You could, like, you could, like, make them, there's a lot of things that you could do very, very easily using view. So, if this is interesting to you, um, we can spend more time on this. What do you think? Yeah, so, the, yeah, this stuff is super easy with view. So let me start with a, a simple example. Okay, so let's get a different skin tone, and we want our function to return one of these. So we basically need to generate a number between 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We need a number between 0 and 4. Four, right so one two yeah so we can do like math whoops math floor math uh, math random okay so here math random will return between zero and not including one which is this syntax right so it's a number between zero and one so we can do math random times, oops, times like, uh, I think we want to do times five math floor. I think that's how we can do this. Uh, let's just check in the browser. <laughs> okay, so Nick wants to do like the really cool art thing. Okay, so we get four, two, three, four, zero. Okay, we're never getting five, which is the point. We want zero through four. Okay, so this is simple enough. Um, if you think about it, this is actually astronaut's length, right? Uh, like that, and length is a property, so it looks like that. Okay, so that's close, and then like let's make this whole thing a function. So we do like function. I want like a random item in an array. So I can do function, uh, let's do random, and it takes an array, and it doesn't have a type, and I want to return something. So now A is astronauts, so I'll put this here, right? And then I'll do like, like var rand equals, so this is my random, so I'm getting a random number, which is one of the indices, so zero through four, and then I'm going to return the array at that index. Okay, so now let's make astronauts one of the one of the data of our app. We need to put a comma here. This is super important. Okay, we have our data. Okay, so we have this really general function that we can use to take a array of things and give us back a random index from it, right? Okay, so now we can say, um, this is a bad name, let's do like, let's do like a random astronaut. Is a function that will return a random astronaut, and this needs to be this, uh, because we're referring to a local variable. Okay, whoops. And then let's do, let's do, let's do like this. Yeah, this would be such a great bonus for the view course. Because um, it's not like, you wouldn't use this every day in view, but it would also teach you a lot about view. Okay, so we're going to get a random astronaut by calling, oh, return. So we want to return one of the astronauts from this array. Yeah, that looks fine. And then we need to change this to random. So if we leave this as astronaut, let's see what happens, right? If we do uh, astronaut, and then we can say like, like let's get like the, like the third astronaut every time. 
valid shorthand in line 58. 58? 58. Uh, what's wrong? Oh, sorry. This is an object, so that's the key. Whew. Uh, what is the problem? It's not defined. Oh, astronauts. Okay, cool. So now we can change that for random astronaut. Oh, so close. Did I do something wrong? Astronaut, astronaut. Oh. All right, let's try like this. 300 warnings, Jesus. Okay, got some questions. Okay, we have a question. Is there a function in math for JavaScript to like rand int in Python? It's a really good question because I'm doing some crazy like math floor stuff with like floats, which is like not ideal. Let's do that. So let's do like rand int, um, is it view? No, not view, JavaScript, right? Can we do a rand int function? It's a really good question. Sorry, I'm just opening the chat on my phone. Okay, so the other question was, do I have a Udemy course? No, I don't, but this is kind of like a Udemy course. Um, let's get a whole number. I don't suspect JavaScript lets you do this because JavaScript's sort of quasi. Yeah, this person's saying you just use math random. So there might be um, there might be a way to do it, but we have to make our own function first. So like if you wanted to refactor this because you like didn't want this thing, you could do like function rand in first, right? Which would be pretty simple. Um, so rand in would take two numbers. It would take like a min and a max, and then you could say return math flow, whoops, math, okay, I'll just copy this. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good idea. So we're gonna, we're gonna refactor. So we do math floor math random times max, which in this case means that we never, never, never actually get um, max, which might be annoying. We might wanna do like plus one, because like if we have, if I give like zero through 10, if I do like rand int zero through 10, if I don't have this plus one, I'm pretty sure I'm never gonna get 10. Um, because it's gonna give me zero, like math random will give me, uh, will give me zero through zero point like, like that, right? So anytime I multiply that, I'm never gonna get a whole number. And if I floor it, it just, it'll chop off, it'll chop this off. So if I want to include the, the second number, then I need to do um, plus one somewhere. But where? Math random, I think I need to do it in here. I think that's right. And then let's just double check with some tests. Okay, and then I'll check the questions. Um, I don't, okay, so I don't have a Udemy course, but I do have a YouTube channel that I've like just started. Um, let me put this in the chat so you can just open this. But I've been doing this once or twice a day for a few hours while I'm working on this other course. Oh, I got eight watching. Holy cow. Um, so yeah, that I'm, I'm streaming them here and then I'm recording them and putting them on YouTube after. And I'm, I'll try to do it in part so that like no one video is like more than an hour. This one's a little long. It might be like an hour and a half. Okay. So where were we? Okay, so let's put in our function. Oops, not my YouTube. Let's put in a function. So we never expect randint to be, we like in this case, we want randint to give us any number between zero and 10. So we put the function and then I can do randint zero through 10. Okay, so what do we get? Seven, eight, let's do a for loop because we're not cavemen. For x is zero, x is less than a hundred, x plus plus. 
Okay, and then console log. That's what we're forgetting. Okay, so pretty cool. Now, what's funny is that all right. So we have zero. We have ten, which means this is working. And I bet you, right, if we get rid of that plus one, it won't work. It won't include max. Um, but like, this is funny. Like this, it returned nine two times, which is like statistically unlikely. Um, but it never, oh, okay, here we got three times in a row. So, <laughs> um, math random is like not a genuinely random function. So, just like keep that in mind. Um, it's, it's like, it's called pseudo random, where it's imitating random, but it's not truly random. I mean, you can have repeating numbers in truly random circumstances, but it's, just bear in mind, this is using something called pseudo random, which is like a very, common thing that programming languages do, if not always do. Like the whole thing about like quantum stuff is that it's truly random. Um, so that's just interesting if you want to like look that up later. Okay, so we have rand int, which is actually a really nice refactor. So now we can just do uh, random, let's do like rand item. So we have like random item and then we have random int. So this is pretty Good, and then this is an array. Um, I'll do a, and then I'll do um, let's do like that. Oh, this is missing one thing. Um, if our minimum is not zero and our minimum is ten, we need to always start at ten. So we can do that here first, so that if this was ten, this will be a minimum of ten, and then it'll it'll be right. Um, so that's fine. Okay, so random number, random int, and then, okay, so we can do like, let's do, um, it should be simple, but I'm getting confused. A length return a random int between zero and a length. Now, we have a problem. Um, the code should be fine, but we have like a semantic problem, which is lengths are zero based. So if we like, like, if like we have five astronauts, right? And this is basically five. So we we never, never, never want to get five because that's an array bound. Um, it's beyond the like our like the only actual values that we want are between zero including four. Um, and right now we can get five, which means random int either needs to remove this plus one or we need to do a minus one here. What do you think is a better, a better design? <coughs> My instinct is that this is better, personally. <coughs> Did I say like, give me a random number between zero and a hundred, well, give me a number between one and 10. I'm saying one through ten. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's really up to you how you want to design it. Let's try to make this like beginner friendly. We'll just do minus. Well, that's that's a problem because if the array is empty, um, then it would be negative one, which is also a problem. So, okay, let's go back to plus one because that's safe. Okay. So this should work. So we have random int. Um, let's like let's make this cool. Rand int, rand item. I agree. If you were to write documentation, that would make more simple as a simple function. So so do you mean the way that we have it now, where you have plus one, and then we don't have to worry about like the length of the array? Because that to me feels better. There's like less stuff that we have to do. Let me know if that's what you meant. Okay, we have rand item and rand int. So now this is pretty clean code. So our random astronaut instead of let's like let's make this rand asked just because we're no that is way not readable. Okay, we're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to here. We're not gonna try to random astronaut and then we want to return a random item for okay cool that's it. So that um. Okay, cool. So I think we're on the same page. Whew. 
Sorry for that like long sidebar. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh my god, more warnings. It's because this should be a function, I think. Console. Random astronaut is not defined. Okay, why not? Random astronaut is not defined. So you should be complaining about this, which is defined. So... This is what programming in JavaScript feels like. Random astronaut is not defined, but it is defined. I feel like it's because random astronaut. The thing is, like, we can go back because the last time our state was safe. Um, but I want to work through it. So we have random astronaut here. It's a function. We're calling the function every time, which in, I guess it needs the parentheses. Um, so, oh, I think I know the problem. I don't know the problem. Do you know the problem? <laughs> Somebody said this is what chewing non gum. <laughs> this is what chewing non, not a number gum feels like. Yeah. To be honest, I don't even understand the joke, but it's just funny because this is painful. <laughs> um, okay, let's just like let's just go backward in time really quickly, but we'll keep everything in history so we can jump forward. And let's just go to the last time this was working safely, which would have been about here. Let's check. Okay, I think that would be here. Come on. Yes. No. Yes? Yes. Okay, so. And then we made it random. And then it stopped working. And then we got rid of the parentheses. And then it stopped working again. Okay, let's do this. Let me copy the code that we wrote so we don't have to repeat ourselves. And then we're going to go back to where it was working last time. Okay, so, which would have been here-ish? Here. Okay, let's go to the this one. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have this stuff, which is from the future. If aliens ever came to Earth to like do something, it would be to save us from JavaScript. I'm sure of it. They'd like come here, like give us the most beautiful language like an arrival to get rid of JavaScript and then they'd leave. And then civilization would flourish for like a hundred years minimum. I think. Okay. Um, okay, so we have random astronaut is a function. Oh, guys, guys, guys. Method is plural, holy cow. I need to put this in the chat. Method is plural. Okay, methods. Man. This is why you have to do JavaScript in like baby steps. Um, and I worry that like Udemy courses don't teach you this stuff because it's so subtle. You know, you need to really sit there with the developer um, to see this. Okay, and then random astronaut is there. Yay! Okay, cool. So like, let's use our refactored functions to get rid of this one. The only thing we need to change is we're calling random item. So we can speed this up. Oh, what happened here? I think we're returning an index that doesn't exist probably because of the plus one problem. Um, that's interesting. So now we have missing astronauts, which is weird. They're not missing though, but there's a space, there's like, it's like an empty string instead. So let's like, so if a random item, let's do minus one. Yeah, okay, so it's an array, it's a, it's a, there's a bounds problem. Um, so, 
if I did, so 0 through 5, if I want it to be 0 through 4 as the return, then I need to get rid of the plus 1, which means that this should be fine. Oh. Yeah, the, the one letter stuff is insane. Okay, um, we're good now. We're good. Okay, now do some like random int returns. So like so now we should document this because it's working and it works in a specific way. This is a really good time when you should take a break and start documenting your code. Okay, so random int returns a random number between including so let's do like between um, n1 and n2 and n2 um, uh, but, um, let's do like this including n2 okay so that is good documentation uh, because just this one sentence can take away a lot of the the problem um, wait a minute no it doesn't it doesn't return including n2 it would have to do plus one because we're flooring it. So it's between n1 and n2, which means that return, I'm becoming like a JavaScript therapist, random, that'd be a cool name for like a YouTube channel. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, returns a random item from an array. Uh, Turns with random. Yeah, okay, so this is good documentation. Cool. Okay, so now our view app is cool. So, like, now we can start to do some other cool stuff, right? Like, we can make the font size. Um, we can do a whole bunch of stuff. So, like, let me, let me see how I did this one, because I want it to be very similar in style. So... This is the whole code. It's not that long. So this is 24 by 8, which is good to know. So we do 24 by 8. Easy. Whole thing updates. Really, really cool, right? What else is different? Um, so I wrote this one a little bit differently. Oh, that's interesting. I put the grid in the data. And then, oh man, we have to do that. Holy cow, I forgot that was possible. Okay, so, um, let me see, so we have some comments. Yeah, dude, so like I, so the thing, like, it's, it's a comment about, it's a comment about comments. Um, like I'm, when you write tests and you write documentation, Everyone sort of knows those are good things, but the problem is that they can also slow you down. So the thing is, like, I would write documentation only to the ex like I would write documentation once you have done something worth documenting. It's like you know, like TED talks or like ideas worth sharing. Um, I would say like do document documentation and tests when you have something worth testing and documenting because if you just do documentation for the sake of documentation. Um, it's like wearing a helmet while you're walking. Like it's it's not the most reasonable thing, but I, just for what it's worth. Okay, so this is kind of looking cool. We'll, we'll do like different sizes and, and I can show you how to rotate. So anyway, um, we can refactor this because like this like line actually might be hard to see it over the live stream. There's a line right here, which is indicating that we are at here, like we are at, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so this line right here indicates that we're at 80 characters, which in programming, it's a good practice to not have your stuff bleed over 80 characters um, for various reasons. But so the point is, our, our app's cool, except this is like kind of like not cool. So I forgot that you can refactor this in a really cool way. So what we can do is we're going to go back to the data uh, here, and then we'll add um, we'll add one called grid, and let's put this right in here. Um, like this, comma, 
and then let's like put the raw stuff. Okay, so it's actually not that hard to refactor this. Um, pretty much, I think this needs to be this now. Thus, thus columns, this columns. And I think that's fine. So now in theory, oops, 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 oops. In theory, if we put grid there, it should, it should be, like it should do this for us. Let's check. I have a feeling that it's not gonna work. But we'll get back to that. Yeah, I agree with you too. Uh, we are very similar in age. Okay, so let's do grid. Yeah, right, so it's breaking. Um, and I actually know why it's breaking. So this is much nicer to like put this in here, um, in my opinion. Obviously, you're like entitled to your own. But it's, it's not working because this columns, objects are weird in JavaScript. Um, you would think that I can just do like this columns, but I can't. I don't know why, to be completely honest with you, but that doesn't work. But I, I know how to fix it, so we're not going to like struggle through this. Um, and there's no console warning. There's like nothing telling us that there's a problem, which is interesting because like this is not even a bug in, in like in JavaScript's mind. This is like, no, you just wrote bad code and you have no idea. Deal with it. So basically, there are times where when you're writing a program, um, it's much easier to design it by using global variables instead of having to worry about is this local or is this global. So if it's global, it's always available. You don't have to worry about what it belongs to. So let me show you an example of where I use this in a different project very quickly because I think it's a very good example. So for the Twitter bot, I did something which was I defined a global vari so I defined a struct. A struct is like a it's kind of like an object. I defined basically a place that has all these properties. So I have a struct called R, and then it has like RR, RD. Um, and you would use it like this. So it's like, like if I'm in like a function, this isn't go by the way. Maybe like r round, and then that would give me this string, or I could say like r challenge, and then that would give me this string, right? So the point is that this is a really nice pattern. Instead of polluting your global namespace with like all of these different strings, it'd be much nicer to just attach them to something else which is exactly what we're gonna do to refactor um, this stuff right here. So we're gonna actually do, we're gonna make an object. Uh, we'll do it at the top because um, it's easier to find it. Then we'll do const g for globals. And we're gonna be an object. Oops, uh, this is, there we go. Okay, and, okay. So now, get rid of that. So this is a nice architecture because um, it's much more flexible now. We can just like, like, we don't have to worry about what this belongs to because this is just relevant everywhere. Um, so it's, it's like, it's a different way of thinking about this. Uh, but I, I like to use this. Um, uh, okay, so in theory, we can get rid of these now. And then our grid is just referring to columns, and it's just referring to rows, which means that our computed property down here, the sum which gives us both of these, would also need to be like this. Um, but we can also do something else. If I uh, make this simple, let's just make this a method, and then let's just do like um, sum, uh, let's just do sum. So function, let me check questions. Okay, cool. So we're gonna return columns times rows, right? And I think that should work. Let's just double check. Okay, so obviously there's a warning. Let's just see if we can figure it out. Oh, oh, it's G, you know? We need to refer to our globals now. So, we can do g columns, g rows, oops, g columns and g rows. And we need to do that because there's a very good reason for this. All oh, right, we're refactoring it into an object. 
the object is called grid and it does this stuff. Um, let's like let's use kebab case now. So let's do like this. It's called kebab case. Okay, and this template, this is template, this is rows, this is columns. Okay, right. So the problem was we couldn't refer to the row the we couldn't refer to rows and columns here because of the nature of objects unless I'm like misunderstanding something. So we made them globals, which is a much simpler architecture, which means the only caveat is we need to remember to put the G in front of it now. Um, so we went from this to basically G, but it also allowed us to refactor our grid style, which is good because this is a good paradigm. Uh, okay, I think this is correct. Our app is starting to have like some size. Okay, so it still doesn't want to work. My globals, const globals. If you guys see the issue, let me know. I'm going to start to check it out. Uh, oh my god, there's still no issue. Okay, we got to put on our thinking hats. Const g is an object and it has columns and it has rows. And then And then G columns, G rows, grid template columns, grid template rows, G columns times G rows, turn. Oh, we made this a method, which means this needs parentheses. Oh, I actually think I like this more as a computed then. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, you need to be really careful if you change more than one thing at a time because the amount of whoops, the amount of things that could go wrong is like not linear. Uh, okay. 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 Cool. Uh, so this is just an optimization. It's not functionally any different, but it is an optimization that is nice in the sense that. Um, it's nice in the sense that if we can refactor our CSS out of our HTML, like we don't have like this crazy thing, that's just better overall. Okay, let's see what else we would need to do to make these styles very, very similar. Okay, so we're at the very, very end of this, like part of this. Um, all, like, yeah, we've like redone all of this. Uh, there's a few differences, but they're like not that big a deal. Okay, so the only thing is that we need to change Okay, so Nick, this is like this is like the exciting part. Um, this is where we can start to go really, really, really crazy. Um, yeah, this is pretty exciting because it's so simple now. Uh, so only okay. So the font size changes. Uh, everything else is pretty much okay. Cool. Okay, so what we're gonna add to finish this is we'll make this the sizes be variant. So the sizes will change. And the other thing that we can do is we could make them rotate, um, but it's up to you. Let's just make the sizes change. And then, oh, this looks really cool. Okay, so how can we do that? So remember, we're using view, which means we can just like, <clears throat> we're using view and we can, we can make things um, we can, do, we can do things pretty intuitively, right? So we know that for each paragraph, they need to have a, like a, they, they need their font size to change. So what happens if we go to each paragraph and we just say like, we'll do like uh, style, uh, let's bring this on a new line, and just say like style, and then inside of it, we can say like, font size, remember this needs to be either camel case or quoted like that if we use kebab case. So if we do font size, um, so like 20 pixels, we'll, we'll just start here. Like let's just see if we can get this to work. We can't because this is a literal. Okay, cool. So that worked. So now we just need this to like be like a random function that like returns like a number and then like concatenates pixels or something, right? Like we like kind of 
know how to do this, and we've already written some of the functionality. So like, let's say we want a, like a random size between 0 and 20, and we want it to have pixel at the end of it, right? So that's going to be our function signature. Well, we've already written most of this. Um, Okay, so I forgot how random int works, but we documented it, right? So we're going to return a random number between n1 and n2. So this should be, oh, I should have said something, not including. Okay, so not including n2. Uh, I think that's, that's better. Okay, so it's never going to be 20 pixels, which we can just do like, Mm. Yeah, it's up to you how you want to design the functions. Okay, so okay, let's just add um, pixels. Oh, no, sorry, not pixels. Um, postfix. So this is an optional parameter that we should be able to do like var rand equals this return rand plus postfix. So this shouldn't it might be like undefined. Let's, let's okay. Let's before we like screw up our app. Let's go to here. It's a console. Okay, so that's fine. And we do random ints between one and ten, and then let's do pixels. Okay, that's really nice. It is. <laughs> is it including ten now? Math floor times. Oh, times 10, and then we floor it. Oh, it is including. Jesus. I've rewritten this documentation like four times. Okay, so this is cool. But what happens, oops, what happens if we omit the last argument? We're chewing some non-gum, right? That's because this does not initialize uh, to, like, like, it would be fine if we give it an empty string. Um, but the problem is that it doesn't know that it's a string. So it's like, um, so we can say like, we're gonna, this is called a guard statement, right? It's, this is a guard. A guard is any time you like do something to fix something before you get started. So we're gonna say if something guarded, let's say if postfix uh, is undefined, then postfix, is let's set it to empty, right? Then that should fix that problem. So let's paste in our new function. And then if I get rid of that, we still get a number, right? Good. And then if we, we go back and then we put like view with, right? Cool. So this is great. Um, we have a guard statement which protects against a missing argument. Um, the thing is, JavaScript's gotten pretty advanced lately. I feel like there's default values now. Uh, not, sorry, someone was joking about non-gum. Um, it's a joke that I don't understand, but the point is that that 5-gum is a... Oh, funny. I don't get it, but... Anyway, um, so how do we set a default argument for JavaScript? We want to set a default value. Job, like the thing is, JavaScript didn't used to be able to do a lot of this stuff, but lately it's gotten more powerful. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? We just do equals, which is a little weird. Um, now, in theory, we don't need the guard anymore. In theory, we're good. So, like, let's go to here, and then let's go to here, and then let's try it again. Okay, random int returns a random number between n1 and including n2. Okay, and then we're just checking this. Cool. So the default's working fine. We don't have any non-gum. Yeah, sweet. So we got rid of the guard with like three characters. Okay, cool. Um, I'm more than happy to put this code online when it's done. Okay, we got a question. Oh, never mind. It's a comment. Okay, so. Guys, we are doing great. This is a like like this isn't a typical view app, but I think it's a really really good example because we are using Flexbox, we're using Grid, 
we're using Vue, and we're using like Vue Art, which is a, it just requires you to think about <coughs> it, it, like it uses a different part of your brain. Um, we're we're being very creative today. Okay, so then let's just make this. Um, you know what? I want like a random float function because I want the pixel size to not just be an integer, which is fine. Um, we can pretty much just do this. So we're making our own random standard library today. So random float returns a random float between n1 and n including n2. Um, we can do something like this to just kind of make it more readable. So f being for float, n being for number, or actually it'd be better if these are i's. So this is um, this is an interesting way of doing like documentation, but not like this isn't commenting doc. It's, this isn't um, these are not comments. We're not like leaving documentation, but we're writing the function in a way where it's a bit more expressive. So n right n's are just numbers, but i is specifically an integer, or f is specifically a float. It's it's this idea is called self-documenting. Our code is documenting itself, which is, I think it's a, I just think it's better. Uh, okay, let's just make sure this is running. Um, right, so ran doesn't exist, uh, and then this needs to be ran float. Oops, random float. Okay, cool. And then we just go here, and we need to say, give me a random float between n including 20 with the postfix of px. Okay guys, this is the moment of truth. Here we go. No die. Oh my god. Um, random. Genius. Random int. Random float, f1, f2, postfix, rand, f1, f2, i, i. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Um, we haven't actually tested this, which is like not the best. Give me a random float between 10 and 20. Make the style pixels. Yeah, dude. So, okay, so like this, the thing is, um, I know this is like a long screencast, but I think it's a good one personally because you don't get this when you go to Udemy. You don't get this when you go to Coursera or whatever. Like, you're not going to get this perspective of programming when you are doing this stuff in isolation, beside just like you doing it. So, um, this is cool because you get to sort of see a perspective which makes programming a little bit more humane. Um, okay, so like do 1, 10. Wait a minute. There's something wrong here. This isn't a float at all. Oh, because we're calling floor. We never actually took floor out of it. Duh. Oh, yeah, this is really easy. F1, F2. Okay, cool. Let's try that again. Yeah. Okay, so this will never hit 10, but 9.9999 is fine, because that's like... This plus one would like totally break everything. Um, cool, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, so why is our program not working? <clears throat> it says that random float doesn't exist. Is that true? Random float. Oh, the function doesn't exist because it has to be attached to our view. My bad. Hmm. So it's like these would be better if they're not global functions and they're general properties, they're general methods of our app. Which would be fine. I just want to make sure. How did I do it before? Um, yeah, I had random as a property. Something kind of feels wrong about that. Um, I'd rather not have to like, because I want these to be global scope because they're generally useful functions, but I don't want to copy and paste them twice. So maybe what we can do is like, yeah, maybe what we can do is this. 
Let's take the names, but not the functions. And then just make them um, like imitations. I don't know if there's like, I don't like, this is just how I would do this. Don't think that this is the only or the best way to do this. And then what we're gonna do is basically plug these into the global functions, but they're not gonna have any internal logic. So these are, these are functional. They, they don't have a state. Oh, that was dumb, I should have copied the signature. Um, should I have? No, I don't need to, because I'm just referring to the memory. I think this will work. Um, voice crack. I think this will talk to the pub, the global ver the global function. I th think that will work. Um, yeah, live coding is cool. It just takes a while. Okay, so yeah, hey, that was really cool. Um, you see that? So, yeah. Um, there we go. But something's wrong. I mean, that was actually much easier than I thought it would be. That's pretty nice. Uh, random astronaut is just an optimized. So, yeah. Um, we could actually just, we could get rid of that and we could go back to here and then instead of random astronaut we could do um, we could say random item from astronauts that should be fine cool okay I like that more and then this is really nice um, there's a problem though I think it's my globals because I have 24 eight, okay so guys what's going on if I go here I think the font sizes are different. That's, I'm just I'm concerned that like these are obviously not the same dimensions. So I think the yeah I think the pixels are different. So like so like for example um, yeah eight and twenty four. Whereas here we're doing ten and tw that shouldn't be that. I don't think that's that big a difference. So this is eight twenty-four pixels. Huh. That's super weird. Something else is going on. Um let me check comments. The default font size, does this matter? because we're overriding the font size anyway. There's a high, okay, that's interesting. Uh, that's one thing that's different. Oh, oh, I'm giving it too much vertical space because this is, okay, because this is full, okay, so sorry. Um, the problem is in here, and it's in grid. We have one FR here, and the app is a, is full. It's like the full screen, which means um, that's problematic because we have because what what'll happen? We have too much space in between the astronauts vertically, so we need to basically create a limit. Um, so what I can do is pretty simple. I can say on the grid. I'm just going to inline the height is the same, which would have been 33.33 view. Oh, that's interesting. It's view width. Okay. Basically, I'm taking the view width, the view width, which is wait, left to right, and dividing it into a third, and that will serve as the total height. Um, so that's basically all the code that we need. We just say, Height is calc. Calc is for calculate. So CSS actually has a calculator in it, surprisingly enough. It's like the most useful thing CSS does. And then, yeah, so, okay, so we could either say 33 point blah, 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 but this is sort of nicer. Um, I'm pretty confident that's the only problem. 
Cool. No, it's not. What? Hmm. So this is the center, but we have too many. So it's basically overflowing. I feel like this line is doing something. A random number between 8 and 24 pixels. This stuff doesn't matter, this stuff doesn't matter. 24 columns, that's just the same, isn't it? Yep, 24 by 8. We have the sum. Um, Well, there's padding, that's a little different, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, so this, okay, so the header, view width by height, but I think we just did that. I feel like these emojis are too big, because the bots never get that big, do they? The biggest bot here is like this big, and the biggest emoji is like twice that. Yeah, it's definitely bigger. So this whole 8 to 24 business feels wrong. Um, I think I know what it is, but... Yeah, that's starting to look closer. But it feels so small. Well, why does it look right? Oof, I might need to take a break. Yeah, I think I know what the problem is. Um, I just don't want to go down that rabbit hole yet. That's, I mean, it's close, um, but I want it to be identical. Okay, so let's ask God for a favor. <laughs> Dear God. Okay, so let's just go ahead and match some stuff. So our App. Okay, so uh, let's put some more CSS right here. Uh, this is starting to get unreadable. Let's do like this. Okay, so let's just put that there. Okay, so we're going to add an outline and some padding. Padding can go first. Oops. Okay, so we have padding a maximum height, and an outline around the whole thing. Okay. Very, very close. It's just the font size. So P's font size is 10 divided by 100, 0 0.1, 128 is 12 pixels. But this pretty much doesn't, okay, let me just open that. Um, CD Twitter doc and then open header three. Oh no 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 uh, sublime. I am wondering what happens if I get rid of this. Nothing. Oh my god. Nothing changes right because this takes precedence. This is more important. But eight through twenty-four. Oh, I forgot about this. There's, there might be something wrong with our random function. Max minus min, why did I put that there? Because like if I have eight and 24 and I do 24 minus, oops, 24 minus eight. Um, I think this is wrong. I don't think that belongs there at all. I, yeah, that's definitely not, yeah. Okay, so I think we were fine. You need 24 minus, you shouldn't because it's just a random number. I think I was like concerned about negative numbers. Um, but that's sort of beyond the scope of this. Okay, cool. So we just need to choose good sizes then. There's nothing wrong. 
Uh, okay, cool. So we're just going to leave this ugly code right here. It could be a class, but it's like such an insignificant thing that we do once. Um, okay, so like let's let's we need to choose font sizes now. So like here is our app, and like we need to choose a good font size. So 510 is a little bit too soft. We can do five. Uh, let's do like 816. So we have too many. So we can either choose to make it smaller, but I, th I think, uh, how does it look on Twitter? Let's get rid of a few, not rows, but columns. Uh, or let's get a few, rid of a few rows. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So like, let's have six instead. So because we went through all the painstaking effort of tying everything to global variables, this is very easy. Really easy. Cool. So we do six by 24, which looks pretty good. We have different size emojis. And then we, we want to have this margin because, like this padding, because if we don't, it looks a bit awkward to have it hugging um, the wall. Uh, it, it's sort of hard to see, but like, well, it doesn't look terrible. It gives us some extra breathing room. Let's go ahead and just skip the padding um, and upload it and see what happens. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to put this on code pen, give you the code, and then I'm going to put this on woman who code. People still watching? Uh, not screen, but, uh, Twitch. Oh, we still got four people watching. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm a code pen newbie. I don't know how this works to be honest with you, but everything's in one one file because we, yay. Yeah, you might want to change some things, but it's fine. Um, yeah, that worked. Okay, let me give you this code. <laughs> um, Linda coin to the moon. And then we'll send this to somebody on Twitter who will appreciate this joke. That is not to the moon, that is to then moon. To the moon. Okay, let me give you this pen. Um, is it public? Private pen. Okay, it's public by default. And yeah, I don't, I don't know how code pen works, but I'm gonna give you this. Um, let me make sure it works anyway. It works. Okay, here is this link. Here you go. Use responsibly. Then let's go ahead and put this on Twitter. Um, okay. For what it's worth, I don't know. Uh, this is like extremely helpful for me because learning something in isolation, like learning Flexbox by itself, or learning like um, let's do this in Safari. So, so one of the problems with using Google Chrome for everything is that Google Chrome has a hard time rendering subpixels, um, which means like fractional pixels. So like that would be hard for Google Chrome to, to render. Because these are all floats, it'd be much better if we use Safari, which is good for them, some things and bad for other things. Um, maybe Firefox is a backup because it can deal with these fractional font sizes that we have. Okay, cool. So we have this, and I'm just gonna clip the the top and the bottom, and then throw that into Twitter. Okay, so what I'd like to do is like take a break after this, and then we can try to make the um, that looks so cool. Then we can try to make the color picker if people still have like energy.
What do you guys think about that? Uh, let's go to Twitter and do this. What do you guys think about doing the interactive color picker that we were supposed to be doing the whole time? So this is the PNG that we talked about earlier. I'm gonna put this in here. Come on, buddy. Don't fail me now. Edit. Edit. What? Did my internet stop? Oh, the color picker. Um, I'll show you in a second, Nick. This is crazy, like we did all this work. There we go, okay. Okay, she has a header, an inclusive view generated header. That's pretty cool. It's very easy to edit, change it, fix it, whatever. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Nick, what I was talking about is the color picker. We were supposed to make this. So it depends. Do you guys have the energy and the patience to like take a 20 minute break or something and then go try this? Or like, what do you guys feel like? I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to work on this anyway, so it's just a matter of if people want to watch. Um, but this is relevant to the course, so I think this would be good for me to do anyway. Yeah, I think we'll do this. Um, let's take, like, what time is it in Ukraine? Oops. Uh, let's go on the break. Let's do it a break, and then let's, what time is it in Ukraine? It's two. Oh, that's awesome. Let's take like an hour break and then and then reconnect uh, 55 minutes from now at the start of the next hour, which would be three o'clock in Ukraine. Um, yeah, cool. And then just like reach out to me on Twitter in the meantime. All right, so I'll stop the recording. Right, it's two, two o'clock. Combining the random int with the random float into the function... Um, so you said combine. Oh, I see you combined it. Let me see what you did. You know what I should do? I should put the code as I'm working on it in steps on CodePen. Hmm. Check the comment in a second. Oh, but that's cool. If it could be the same function, that'd be even nicer. Yeah, you could like make it take a parameter for like if it's a float or something. That'd be cool. Okay, um, we'll recontinue in like 55 minutes. Um, I'll do like Twitter blasts and everything. And, and we'll, we'll do this because now we have a good enough foundation to do some more um, stuff. Cool, okay. Uh, let's take a break, guys. Thank you for, for sticking through this. Okay, bye.